like a clear, beautiful day at Florida for an on-time liftoff. So with that call out, Falcon 9 is autonomous through the rest of the launch. Launch director will give their final go for launch up next. Starlink 415, LD, go for launch. So with that, the LD, or launch director, giving their final go for launch. We're just over 30 seconds to go. Range green, weather green, Falcon looking healthy. With just 30 seconds to go. Seconds. Let's watch Falcon take 53 Starlinks to lower the orbit. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Go Falcon, go Starlink. Downrange. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. Successful liftoff of Falcon 9 from Space Launch Complex in, For in Florida, uh, bringing us bringing 53 Starlink satellites into orbit. This first stage lifting off for its first time. Now, uh, although at liftoff, nominal. gravity is pulling straight down on the rocket. As we ascend, we tilt the engines. That's called gimbling. And we begin to turn the rocket horizontally. So we're still going up, but we're starting to pick up sideways speed away oh, from the pad. Sad. This is called a gravity turn. So this is what we use to get ourselves into orbit. Coming up next, we'll expect a call out for maximum dynamic pressure, or max Q. Maximum aerodynamic pressure. So max Q being the point where the stresses are highest on the vehicle, we're speeding up, the atmosphere is getting less dense, and so there's a, a point of maximum pressure on the vehicle. So now that we're through that, it should be easier and easier for Falcon to get into orbit. Now we've got three events coming up about a minute from now. The first of those being main engine Start cutoff. Start MVAC engine chill. Or MECO. That's where we'll shut down all nine of the Merlin 1D engines in preparation for the next event, which is stage separation, where the first and second stages will separate from one another. First stage continuing back towards planet Earth for recovery, and the second stage continuing on to that third event, second engine start Falcon number one. Nominal. That's we heard a call out for uh, engine chill begin beginning on the Merlin vacuum engine that's prepping the turbo pump on the Merlin vacuum in preparation for full propellant flow. Shortly after second engine start of the Merlin vacuum, we'll also have fairing deployment. And once we're in the vacuum of space, we don't need to carry those fairing halves anymore, and we'll bring them back to planet Earth for recovery. So coming up, Miko, stage step, SES-1. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. Separation confirmed. Awesome. So those four events happening, maybe we'll get an extra shot of those fairing halves heading back to planet Earth. You can see on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, well, there's the Merlin vacuum and a fairing half. Left-hand side, you can see the first stage is deploying its grid fins with an amazing view of our planet behind it. And we also saw a view earlier of those Starlink satellites getting to see the vacuum of space for the first time. Now, the next major events will happen about three minutes from now. They will happen on the first stage, which is on the left-hand side of your screen. That'll be entry burn on the first stage. And so during the entry burn, we'll ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines as we start to get to the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And that reduces the, the loads and the heating on the first stage as we start to re-enter the atmosphere, making it easier for us to recover the vehicle. You're seeing periodic uh, 
bursts of white gas on the vehicle, like there. That is from our attitude control system signal, Bermuda. on the first stage. So we carry nitrogen gas. And because uh, there's no air, or very limited air, I should say, in, in the vacuum of space, um, the attitude control gas is what's giving us force to change the orientation and get the engines pointed down. Those grid fin structures, you see two of them on your screen on the left-hand side, can't do much with the, the vacuum of space. So we have to use the attitude control control thrust thrusters to orient the engines down. Right-hand side of your screen, you can see the orange glow of our Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. It'll continue burning until about uh, T plus 8 minutes, 50 seconds or so. It's got a long burn ahead of it to take those 53 Starlink satellites into orbit. Both stages are on nominal trajectories. With that call out there, we're hearing from the ground team that both the stages are right where we expect them to be. As a reminder, the first stage is heading to our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions, which is stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean. It's changing its orientation so we can get the engines pointed down for the upcoming entry burn, where we'll ignite three Merlin engines. That burn will last about 20 seconds, and that's to slow down the stage uh, in preparation for gliding through the Earth's atmosphere as we start to pick up density in the Earth's atmosphere, those grid fins becoming more and more effective in controlling the flight path of the booster towards our drone ship. Once we get to the drone ship, just above it, we'll have another burn. That'll be the landing burn, where we'll ignite just one Merlin engine, the center Merlin engine. Then we'll deploy the landing legs and hopefully have a soft touchdown on just read the instructions. Second stage burn, continuing to look nominal, taking 53 Starlink satellites into orbit. Now, if you're just joining us, you came at a good time. We're coming up on entry burn on the left-hand side of your screen. Stage one, FTS has saved. Stage one, entry burn, start up. So nominal start of the entry burn. We're flying through our plume, so we use a, uh, a carbon-based propellant, hydrocarbon-based propellant. And so that's actually what causes uh, the soot to appear on our reflown boosters. Stage one, entry burn shut down. This burn lasting just about 20 seconds, just enough to slow us down as we start getting into the thicker parts of the atmosphere. And from here on, those, you'll see more action from the grid fins. They'll rotate a little bit to keep the stage on track towards our drone ship. Next major event coming up on the first stage. That'll be the landing burn at about T plus eight minutes, about a minute from now. Stage launch trajectory nominal. That burn lasting about 20 seconds. As we briefly lose the video feed there on the first stage, coming back to a view of the second stage. Now it's been burning since stage separation, about two and a half minutes into flight. And it'll continue its burn for about another minute, stage one is 15 seconds. Targeting shutdown just around T plus uh, eight minutes, 50 seconds, nine minutes into flight. Here we go, exciting view from the first stage. We'll expect to see entry burn startup, or excuse me, landing burn startup here. Stage one, landing burn. So there's ignition of the center Merlin engine. You can see the grid fins helping guide us towards the drone ship. And we'll expect to see the landing legs deploy just before we Stage touch down. Two, terminal guidance. You can see that our speed is rapidly one, coming down to zero. Deploy. There's landing leg deploy. Oh, and a lovely touchdown. This booster's first landing, the 100th and 11th recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage booster for many more flights to come. Now coming up, second stage coming to its first, uh, or excuse me, its next activity, second engine cutoff number one. And the ground teams will then assess the orbital trajectory and give us a call out if we're right where we intended to be. Second engine cutoff. 
So successful shutdown of the Merlin vacuum engine. Expected loss of signal, keep. And a beautiful view of nominal our- Nominal parking orbit. With that call out for nominal parking over orbit, that means the second stage is safely in orbit. Awesome shot of the first stage on your screen for its first landing. And with that, we're actually gonna be ending our webcast for today's launch. As I mentioned previously, we will be confirming payload deployment over our social channels, so keep an eye out for that. That's expected around T plus 54 minutes into flight. We'll also leave the mission audio live on our YouTube channel if you'd like to follow along there through payload deploy. Big thanks to the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting our mission. Of course, thank you to our viewers and to all of our Starlink customers for using the service at, our, at this time. That's been a pretty busy set of few days here at SpaceX. We want to thank you for joining us this Saturday, and we hope you all have a fantastic weekend.